everyone, it's Cindy. Welcome back to Studio Lou. So I'm here today to work a little bit on the end-to-end -end moth journal that we got started. I think this is now part four, maybe, maybe five. I forget. There's been a little bit of gaps in between this and I do apologize for that. Sometimes you make a plan to do something with a schedule and then life is like, here's a horseshoe. So yeah, I've just been kind of busy and off and on catching these weird colds that aren't the bad one but they're still pretty annoying um that being said here are the signatures in case i didn't show them to you they've been nicely flattened by my book press so they are ready to go um what i would like to do today so if you recall the last thing we did was covering this spine with this beautiful gold paper and what i want to do today is actually um finish the cover and I have selected, I think, this image from my digitals, my, my kit that I'm making for my moth journal. Um, uh, I guess it, it'll be like a kit that will kind of go along with this project. Um, I want to use this image on the cover, probably. So what I'm going to do, uh, and I say probably because we still have to try fitting it there and seeing how it looks. Um, I also want to emboss the uh, image so I'm just gonna fussy cut it out um, not gonna be concerned with the little antennas on these tiny little guys I feel like just having the wings will be um, demonstrative of this being a moth and I'm also just gonna make some changes with these little doodled mothy creatures um, to remove some of them here I'm not gonna cut out all of this they're kind of a little fantasy abstract moths okay don't think I want to include that one because he's not really part of my main moth but I will include this one and then I do want this whole bubbly kind of cloud get rid of any white and just kind of freeform cut this out I'm having a very busy day today um, so I am on my my lunch break from work right now and um, I thought it was a good idea to just kind of work on this okay yeah so I like I definitely like this um, I think when I place it, I'm going to try to place it sort of like that. It's not going to be like, I don't know, not exactly centered, but slightly off because I want to cover the two sixes at the top because I think if you put it direct center, it would kind of look like these don't belong there. So we're going to add a little stylistic asymmetry um, to, to make it make more sense. So that's the next step. So um, let's go ahead and emboss this. So I'll grab a piece of paper. I, think I can move my cover here and we'll come in with the embosser, the embossing uh, glue or whatever it's called. And I'm going to just emboss it with um, clear embossing powder from Ranger. Let's make sure we get an even coat there. Then I have lost my tweezers somewhere in my frequently used bin. Uh, they probably have just fallen inside. I usually leave them hanging over the edge. But I'll just use these. Okay, it looks like we'll probably have to come back and do a little bit more. But first we'll do the initial um, heat. Keep this paper handy. Get rid of any extra bits here. 
And I need my book pages. My glue book. Heat gun time. Nice, nice. And then, yeah, there's a couple spots that I need to touch up. So I'll just do that right here and right here. For some reason, those wing tips didn't get covered. There we go. So, yeah, now this is like a nice plastic. So it'd be a lot more durable um, on the cover. Okay. So let's grab the cover now. Yeah, I kind of want that to go, how did I say, kind of like that. So I'm going to put this on with art glitter glue because it's a nice paper to paper. I'm just going to try to get um, a relatively even coat that's nice and thin. And definitely get these little antenna. take my pinky and kind of smoosh it a little bit around just because I don't want any glue bleeding around on the um, the black cover if possible even though our glitter glue is uh, quite forgiving and I apologize for my voice if it sounds a little bit crinkly and hoarse today I'm still just you know moving through the 77 stages of whatever this is I have okay so I know this needs to go kind of right around here ish let's just set it down and get the glue off my hands um I think we're a little high maybe let's see right there that's what we want yeah yep yeah that's good okay so we can smoosh and we're not getting too too much glue it's good I'll be able to go around with a kneaded eraser if I need to and remove any glue bits that I might end up with, but I don't think it'll be too bad. Just kind of smooth them out as I go. smoothing all over the surface just sort of in both directions so that we make sure that literally every little edge is quite well affixed down we would not want this to be popping up see right there that one it will show you um, when you do that if there's somewhere that is a little weak of glue and then I just add more glue and I kind of press toward it because I know then it's like um 
it's kind of pressing into the paper and then just directly press down. I'm a little more um, glue detail obsessed when I'm doing a cover because you know it's a pretty important part of your book. You want to make it look nice. So I'm just going to go around with my kneaded eraser and it's going to ball up and grab any, any gluey bits here. And now I definitely also wanted to be putting a, a book plate on the bottom of here. Oops, I'm gonna move this little box back here. Just looking for the right book plate. I think I see one here. But it's in behind the others. There's one and there's two options. I definitely not like that kind of color. what we like more and where. So obviously center, over here, over here. Okay, I think I like that one better. One for the color and two because this is round and I feel like this would just kind of be more the of the same. And I think to balance, so this is over here, this would create too much of a gap. It'd sort of be like, why is there nothing here? I would need something going on here. I feel like at center, it adds balance, if that makes sense. So let's go ahead and get that on there. <clears throat> so we'll just pick this up, pick this up. Just eyeball it. I'm going to straighten it again and look at it and see how I feel about it. Yep, I feel good about that. Okay, so let's just hold it nice and still. Hold one, don't let go. Hold two. When I'm doing these holes, I'm going in like a circle so that like if I'm doing this, I'm not like moving it in some way. So now I've got my holes. So I'm going to go ahead and poke all the way through. But don't poke your fingers. Okay. And then here on back, what happens when you do that? You get a little volcano. So what I usually will do is grab my knife. And we just shave down the volcanoes. And I do that by just taking my blade, laying my book flat and sliding my flat blade right across. And see, you remove that little belly button. It could be a little trickier as you get um, further in. You could, it's easier with a longer blade because then you can kind of be off the side, but I think I'm okay. get a new blade for this knife. So now we need some little brads, which is what I'm going to affix this with. One, two, three. I'm also reminded that I need to buy more of these brads. Because I am almost out of them. poke that through and then what I do to put them in, um, just come in here and I put my pokey tool in between the split and then I just take the other end and I smooth it down nice and hard. I don't do this with my fingers because these are a little bit sharp and they can get under your fingernail if you are not careful and that feels pretty awful. It happened to me once before, so now I use the pokey tool to just 
handle it for me. Okay. Three. Now I'm imagining I'm probably going to add some gilding wax around the edges of this book too. Um, but I'm going to wait until the end to do that. Okay. So the brads are all in. That's perfect. And what I'm going to do, um, I like to just add one more layer of like security to these but also it's really just about <coughs> flattening it out so that when I put paper later on it it's going to still be flat so I just take some nice um, good contractors masking tape and just burnish it down on top of each one And then it just really melds right in with the book. Okay. Done and done. So yeah, I think that adds to the cover quite significantly. Um, I like that a lot, actually. And we'll see if I'm going to do anything else with this. I might. I'm probably going to add some gold around this in like a, a bit of a, a cloud shadow. And then I'll probably gild around the edges a bit. <coughs> Excuse me. I am so hoarse. It's terrible. I'm sorry if this video is like nails on a chalkboard when I'm talking. Okay. <laughs> um, doo -doo -doo -doo. What now? What now? Okay. Maybe we can start to work on ephemera in the signatures themselves. So what we have already finished is this and this and this. Okay, yeah, I also found a few other things. So these are a couple pages of a release the crafting kit that have moths on them. So I want to make a ephemera with that. These were in my Tuesday 10 bin. Um, so I'll take out the finished ephemera pieces. And also I have this that needs to go in the center of a signature. This I want to make into moth ephemera. Those I plan to use as pockets. I know that much. This is for a fun little project. Maybe we'll get to it today. I think I have one more of those in here somewhere. Because um, I would like to have them both. Yes, I do right here. Okay, good. Okay, so that I think can get me a little bit started. Um, and then we can start making more stuff. So let's move on to the signatures. So now I think I'll try to decide like what order I want them in. Um, so this one and this one, is it this one? These three have slightly bigger papers, a few bigger papers, and these one have mostly smaller papers. Um, smaller being kind of like book page, or not book page, like eight and a half by 11. And then these have like larger pages that will still fit entirely into the full cover of the book. So I think I will start with um, this one and then I'll add a small, then a big, <clears throat> then maybe two smalls, then a big, then another small. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> okay, so. I want to do something interesting here with this front page, I think, and make it a little bit like something exciting to open up to. So I will get to that in a moment, but I first want to find where to put this in the center of the book, um, in, in the center of a folio. It can go in the first one because there's nothing there that requires being in the middle. Um, so. That could be actually cute there, but I don't think so. Um, I need like, I think an envelope. Let me grab one. I have little ones here. There we go. So the other thing I need to do is decorate these back side pages. I just remembered that's going to be a task as well. So it'd be fun to have something that kind of flaps over, but this would need to shrink down. I mean, it could also be a tip up. That might be easier. I also would like a piece of, if I have plastic or acetate to make a clear pocket that I can stitch on here. I want there to be like a clear, shiny pocket. 
let's see if I can accomplish that. Let's um maybe get rid of the other signatures and just work on one. So first things first, we'll measure where we want the pocket to be. You won't cut. I need the good scissors. And I'm just going to even this out now that I have it in my hand and I can see it. That's a little better. Yep, that's good. Okay, so this is going to be a clear pocket on here. Um, I'm going to go to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch it on. I'll be right back. Okay, so that is on there. And the cool thing with it is it will actually kind of be like two pockets because you'll have this back side because this was a, a bag right it was a doubled piece of plastic so we can actually make it into two pockets see okay but now I want to add another level of interest to this and that is the tip up um, so first we're going to take some glue art glitter glue here and we're just going to put it on this flap and this is like sort of setting the foundation for a page like um, if you want to have a page that's like dynamic in a certain way and interesting like it's got flips and flops and things going on um, this is this is when you do that you sort of start with your foundation before you base all of your embellishments you know on the page as well okay and then you can also at this stage think about the back side too right so I just kind of go like this one page at a time um, and then decide how and what to do to make it interesting. So now we need um, like another kind of an embellishment. Now, that being said, if you want to make like a book that feels a lot like a, a folio with a lot of things, you know, you can do another flip here that comes in this way and then comes down. Um, I try to keep myself a little bit tamed down when I'm doing a fat book because um, what will happen is if you have too many things you can have very few interesting super dynamic folios because before you know it you had seven pages in your signature but then everything got so thick that like you're going to need to take a couple out and then you're looking at like what cool page do I lose versus like what writing space am I going to lose so just I guess give yourself some balance um, or make a nice big fat book totally up to you right um so that being said I do think I can do a couple more interesting things and I need my my bin to do that and my bin of things so I think what I'm going to put inside here maybe if this will fit it will so this is going to be inside okay this this uh we made this last time right so now we have a journal card in there that's taken care of um don't think I want to use any of those things here. So let's get our basket of supplies. Let's kind of move the other signatures right over here. And I think it would be fun to have like one of these moth leap people up here. Maybe her. Now the impact to that being there will be that it is going to um, change how I can put things in the pocket. It'll be narrow. Unless I were to just put her to here, which isn't as interesting. The other thing is I don't want to lose her wings. So what if I put her back here like that? Um, and then I'll put something on this side so that we can keep her full wings. Yeah, so she'll be back there. Okay, so the first thing we need to do now is focus on her. She's our, our star of the show now. Where did I put my glue book? <laughs> um, oh, it's over here. Okay, there we go. 
So I'm gonna grunge her up a bit. Let's see what much ink we have, not much, okay. This is actually the perfect grungy brown ink. This is a Woody's ink. It's got like a, a purpley brown kind of color to it. It's hard to explain. I don't know if you can still get these Woody's or not, but they're really nice inks. I got them on clearance. They were clearing them out at my local Desairs store for a dollar and they're so nice. They're, oops, yeah, I can't. Cocoa, the color, or cacao actually. Possibly there's another word in front of it, I'm not sure. There we go, that's a little more grungy and fun. Um, the other thing I'm wondering is if I had a cool, I wish I had like some moth type words from an old book. Um, that would be awesome. Maybe just actually this. I kind of want something just kind of generic. The first day in the wilds, okay? Because, you know, that will play into our whole theme. I'll use that for collage. It's cute, that little page number. <clears throat> okay. I want to put this on her. in the wilds. This is how you can make a little more whimsical um, piece out of whatever you're using your paper doll for. probably see why I don't do a lot of end-to-end -end journal makes because mine are going to be a little long because I spend a good amount of time fiddling around. So if you're happy to see me fiddling around, then I'm happy to do it. <laughs> I feel like lately um, I don't make as many like videos on the journals that I'm making because I worry about like, is this too little work for a whole video that you know people feel like we didn't accomplish much but then <clears throat> I also feel like I kind of want to get back to doing it a little bit because I feel like I don't know it's what I'm working on anyways right so it's probably fine okay yep so that'll go there I like her This pocket and just slide her in there. And I'm spending a lot of time on this just because, like, I feel you want to feel invited into a journal by that first page, right? I'm going to take this little um, book page number that we had left over. plunk it here in the corner just as a little collage bit and I'm also remembering <coughs> that I have a whole bunch of like book pages that have um, little moths on them from the original book so we can probably grab one of those they're in here somewhere I want one that I don't really, yeah, this one. Okay. 
Okay. Let's just tear this a little smaller. our glitter glue because I'm gluing on plastic. There we go. All right, now we need to get a pocket, something that I can use as a pocket because I want to put a pocket on this flip. So let me grab my stuff again. Um, and let's find something that would be fun as a pocket. That would be nice, but I think I want to use that in a more freeform shape. Hmm. Let's grab all these squares. I don't want a person. I don't want that. I think I want something a lighter color. Like that would be perfect, I think. Yes. <clears throat> so we need to trim this a little, I think. Yes, just a bit. Grab my trimmer. here. I'm going to do this off center purposely. Then we need to ink this envelope a bit. It looks too new and I want it a little more grungy. Oh, actually, you know what's cool? Inside is the, um, it's getting that circle from the slide inside. I like that. If you didn't want that, just take it out. But I, I like that because anything that looks like the moon, I get really happy um, that it's there. So I'm just going to go over this too on the side. We'll try to make that moon impression. We'll use that for something, okay? That'd be fun. Now, so we have a nice moon impression. And what I'll do, um, let's try this. So I've got this um, lilac rainbow. It usually works much better on dark colors. But let's see if we can get a little glitziness. And we can. It's good. Okay. Just from this, I'll show it to you in one sec what it is. Okay. It works better on black. And I mean, I could put some black paper down, but I kind of like just the ethereal feel of this. It's fine. And it goes with the overall color scape. So um, this is Luster Wax. It is from Sizzix. And it is Lilac Rainbow. Okay. Uh, has a very magical quality to it. So now let's glue the pocket here. finding with flips I like to 
do something like this with them so that the, the space when you're writing, you're not like you're writing in your book and then you have to move your book down. Although truly, I don't think that cares. I think I, or that matters. So I don't think people care. Um, it's really about personal preference. Like, <clears throat> so now I need something um, to go in this pocket and a couple things for this pocket. I don't want to use anything I already have here. So we need to make one thing I'll make will be from this release the craft done piece. Another thing I'll make will be um, from this first book page. And then one other small piece I need. Possibly with a bit of a freeform shape. Yeah, that. Okay. Okay, so first, let's make this. So I want this to be a little tag to go in the top of here. Okay. Um, so we need to trim this paper a bit. to trim it the other way. Okay. And this is like a really nice paper and it's from the original book page. So I think what I'll do, um, first I want to go in <clears throat> and open this pocket up with my plastic ruler because I just glued it down. So I want to make sure that it, it isn't too glued down. Okay, that's good. Then I'm going to round the edges of this with my quarter inch. I'm in here. That's cute. Okay, so that's done. Then we need to do the ephemera for this pocket. So first we'll do a bigger piece with this. Where's my metal ruler? Here it is. fit in that pocket. Yep. Okay. Then we're going to glue this down on some nice thicker paper. is a little smushy because I um used up the last <laughs> of my last glue stick by shoving it in here <laughs> so it's like a little bit smushy to say the least maybe we won't do that again <laughs> um let me just scrape some of that off because it's going to be too much yeah Oh heavens, okay. <laughs> Let's just waste that paper. Um, we'll put it on this one. There we go. Let's get rid of that gluey, gluey mess. <laughs> Yuck. Okay, that's better. Oh, my dog is whining. It's not 
time yet though. It's almost time for his little afternoon walk. Now we'll snip this out. I'm going to turn this into a tag. That's going to get stitched around and I'm going to add some fabric up top. a little bit of space to play with this tag a little more. Um, just looking for something fun for my scraps. I just feel like that little bit of empty space needs something. Oh gosh, this glue stick. Maybe I made it too mushy. Okay. See, just that little bit of a collage, <clears throat> I feel like it just, it makes it a little more my own. Okay. <clears throat> I'm so sorry for my voice. Holy cow. <laughs> um, then the other point I wanted to take care of, and this is double-sided, was her wing. Remember, I wanted to put something behind there. So I think what I'll do is just tear this and then another one. Okay. Um, yeah, this needs glue. gonna make like a tab with this I need to just pull her wing up a little so that I can fit this here and glue it to the other one then we'll glue her wing down again on that tab okay come back over here and I'll trim this down into like a free form kind of wiggly looking bit of a tab. Maybe I'll even just kind of try to tear there. Okay. Now we're going to have a little work to do on this backside page anyways. I'm not concerned though because I think I know what I'm doing with it already. I'm not worried. Now I want to come back. I've got this silver sharpie. I'm just gonna update the lines in kind of a fun way here, like that. So this I need to stitch and where's that other piece? Here it is. And then I wanna cut this out. Um, but actually, yeah, that's good. I'm gonna just cut it out. Cause it's a nice heavy paper. I don't need to back it to be honest. So the way that I'm making this journal, 
um, it's one of sort of two ways that I do things. So sometimes I just make ephemera. Other times I go page by page through the journal. So this one, you know, I'm kind of doing that. I'm going page by page through the journal. Um, this page is probably going to be a little more detailed than the rest of them. Again, because it's an opening page. So that'll probably be what I focus on for this video. Just this opening page. And now I need a little, just a single little moth. Um, there's one. That's perfect. And I want to put that in here. So I'm going to go, I'm going to stitch this and come right back. All right, so that has been stitched around. I've added some fun like gold lace and eco printed fabric threads and some tattered blue cotton up top. And so we'll flip this up and there's our girl. We're going to pop that in the back pocket of that plastic. Oh, did I make it a little bit too long? No, I think maybe not. Oh, it's fine. Yay. Okay, good. That was a close one. <laughs> Next time measure, Cindy. Okay, and then this I want to put in here. So we have a double layer pocket, some collaging, you know, her back there. This with its pull down ephemera. Um, and then this with its pocket and this can pull up. So we've got the underside of this done. So then that will float down. Then I want to do one more thing here. Um, I just need my ink pad. Magical. Moth. There we go. Okay, so put those over here. And I think I am good with that. So that is the building of an entry page that has a bit of wow to it, right? Something kind of fun and interesting. Now clearly you wanna do something over here. Um, and what I'm thinking is something that is gonna be like a full page of stationery or something um, to just cover this up. This would be kind of fun, maybe, because we could still write on that, but I don't think it's wide enough. So, let me put this out of the way, because I might actually have the perfect thing. Um, where did I have these? <laughs> Over here is fine. Okay. If you'll recall, I've got this, and I think that would be great, the other half of that page. So how wide does it need to be? Let me just tear this off here. And you have lots of options, obviously, for how to handle the back side of this page, but I like this one, I think. So roughly a little smaller than where I folded. little shorter. Perfect. Okay.
glue this. Okay, my glue stick's gone back to normal now, thankfully. <laughs> it's just that little top layer that was grumpy at me. lumpy bit of glue there. That's what caused that problem. I'm just making all the mistakes today for you guys to see. <laughs> okay, that's okay. All right, so I'm going to let this dry and then I'm probably going to <clears throat> come in with a little bit of paint and just go over that. Actually, I have another option too, which could be like something fun. Now, I don't want to add a sticker, not a shiny one. Maybe. Another layer of, no, no, we'll just come back to it. Another option is actually this. So I just want to make sure that it's flat. I'm going to pull it off. See that? I just pulled that right off of there. No fears. Okay. This is silver. Uh -huh. We need to fill that in with something. Here's my idea. I don't know if you see those little tiny reeds there or like plants, but I am making my own that matches kind of the same texture. I'm going to stick it on there. what I call a graceful repair. <laughs> so there it is. Okay. See, you can just mimic what's going on in the digital. You don't need to panic. And then also maybe come over here and you can add a few more. Just nice silvery shapes because who doesn't like having some fun silvery bits? Make it wispy and fun. Okay. So I'm happy with this. I'm going to let it dry. And that is one page <laughs> of our journal. Um, so quite an exciting one, right? They won't all be like that. Um, but yeah, I, I do think that's a lot of fun. And um, I'm going to uh, just keep on going with this series. Sorry for the snip. Of course, my battery decides to die right at the very end. But anyways, as I was saying, we'll just keep going and we'll get through this to the end. Um, so yeah, that's what we're going to do for today. And I will see you next time.